Hello dear students, I am Dr. Shikha Pandey, Associate Professor from the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So today I am going to discuss about the endangered species and endemic species and the hotspots of biodiversity. So endangered species. So first of all, we are going to the, dis the basic definition of endangered species. So we can say that when the number has been reduced to a critical level or habitat that has been drastically reduced or and when not protected and conserved, they are called as endangered species. In any ecosystem, when number of species of a particular type is reduced to a critical level, these species are said to be endangered. So for that's why the International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resource published a red data book which include the list of endangered species of plants and animals. And in India, nearly 450 plant species 150 mammals and 150 species of birds has been listed as endangered species. So this is called as all about the endangered species. So any species, if their number is going to be reduced to a critical level, that species is said to be an endangered species. So for the conservation of that endangered species, for the awareness of endangered species, for the awareness of all these things, International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resource published a book named as Red Data Book, in which they have they have divided the list of endangered species of plant and animals that are nearly nearly to endangered, that are going to be endangered in coming future, or that are that have a threat to be endangered. So, in India, nearly 450 plant species, 150 mammals and 150 species of bird has been listed as endangered species because this species has a threat to going to be extinct in the coming future. So, those species, those they have the, uh, they have threat to be going to be endangered in coming future comes under the category of endangered species. So, in any ecosystem, in any in any ecosystem either terrestrial aquatic or marine if a number of species is going to be a uh, reduced to a critical level that species are said to be endangered species so now comes to the this is the example for some of the rarest and some of the endangered species means those species that that will comes under the category of endangered that is going to be extinct or that is a very rare species means those species that is endemic to India and that have a rate of extinction in coming future. So this is the common example for the rarest animals of the India. First one is the Asiatic cheetah, Asiatic lions, Asiatic wild ass, Bengal fox, goar, Indian elephant, rhinos, rhinoceros, marble cat, mark horse. All these are the all these are the example of rare species in India. So now comes to the red data book. Red data book are the has has divided nine clearly defined category into which every taxon in the world like excluding microorganism can be classified as given in red data book. So red data book is given by IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resource and they have given, they have classified all organism, all uh, organism, all species excluding the microorganism into the nine categories. And the first nine categories, what categories are there? First one is the extinct category, means those are uh, those uh, species that are extinct today. Okay, now next is the extinction in the wild. Next is critically endangered, means those have, they have high risk of going to be endangered in coming future. Next one is the endangered, means those species that is going to be extinct in coming future. Vulnerable, like those they have threat for the extinction. Like next in one is the near threatened, near threatened means that is nearly to going to be threat in coming future, in coming days. And those species that are that comes under the category of least concern means those they those categories those they have very least concern means now their population is okay. They have very least concern category. So India is is comes many important flora and fauna fauna of India is going to be extinct in coming future. For this, we are we have to study about all these organisms because in biodiversity all are connected with each other. So red data book is given by International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resource, that is by UN. 
and that red data book has uh, has nine different category that categorize all species first one is the extinction extinction in the wild critically endangered endangered vulnerable near threatened and least concern so now now we, we are going to discuss all these all these category in details first one is the extinction extinction means that species is extinct to where there is no reasonable doubt that the last individual has died no reasonable record for last 15 years is there and its example is india cheetah indian cheetah means those species they have no reasonable doubt that the last individual has died and no reasonable record from the last 15 years is there that comes under the category of extinct so its example is indian cheetah that species that that has no reasonable doubt but that that the last individual has died and now next is the in the extinction in the wild means a taxon is extinct in the wild when it knows only to survive in cultivation in captivity or as a naturalized population or population well outside the past range example is mulberry silk moth means that a particular species that has been not present in the in the wild but they are they are kept they are surviving in captivity they are surviving in any in any captivity program so that that is called sundan that is not present in the wild that is present only in the in the captivity that's why this category is called as extinction in the wild means they are extinct from the wild they are not present in the in the forest they are not present in their own ecosystem they are present in the captivity only this is extinction in the wild and extinction means like those extinction is totally vanished means totally vanished they are not not present in the last 50 years this is last 50 years this is extinction extinct species and its example is indian cheetah the indian cheetah is a extinct species but mulberry silk moth is a extinct species in the wild but it is present in the captivity so it is called as mulberry silk moth now next category is the critically endangered category and next is endangered category so critically endangered endangered category are called are it means this include species which are facing an extremely high risk of extinction in the wild in the immediate future the population of sub, such species is very low and the threat to its habitat is very high means species so the population of such species is very low means those species they are facing very high high risk of extinction in the wild in the immediate future and the population of such, such species is very low and the threat to its habitat are very high and its example is asiatic lion these include the species which are facing extremely high risk of extinction in the wild within with the immediate future means those species that are facing very high risk of extinction in the wild and in the immediate future in the coming future just now and the population of sub and their population is also very low and they have a threat to its habitat is very high so its example is the asiatic lion now comes to the category of endangered it includes the species that are not critically endangered but are in in danger of extinction if the threat to its survival continue operating also species those numbers has been reduced to a critical level or whose habitats have been so drastically reduced are deemed to be in immediate danger of extinction means what that are not critically endangered but are danger of extinction if the threats to its sur survival is continue operating so species whose number has been reduced to a critical level or whose habitats has been so drastically reduced are deemed to be in immediate danger of extinction and its example is tiger because they tigers are those species that are not critically endangered but are in danger of going to be extinct in one day and the threat to its survival continue operating and it survived that's why government has planned a project tiger in 1983 and that that project is very much helpful for the for the safety of tiger species tiger in indian tiger and now their number is increased at the time of 2005 or 2006 only 1500 tiger is there in india but now it is its number is increased because tiger is coming under the category of endangered so we have saved it 
for going it's in the category of critically endangered because after going to be critically endangered that is very very less number of species are present that's why they that will go under the category of critically endangered endangered are those species that are not critically endangered but have a very high risk of extinction if the threat to its survival survival is going to be continue and all these reason for this endangered critically reason are the habitat destruction the main reason for the extinction of a species is the habitat de destruction and the poaching of wildlife tiger tiger the main reason for tiger is going to be endangered is due to its uh, habitat destruction and the poaching of its uh, and their smuggling of their skin for the for the for the some goods for making some uh, smuggling of its a good its a skin for the for making some leather and all these things so that tiger will fall under the category of endangered now next is the vulnerable species and near threatened species vulnerable species are those species that have danger like it includes the species that are not endangered but are likely to move into the endangered category in the near future if the threats to its survival continue operating it also includes species those population are still abundant but are under under threat from severe adverse factors throughout their range means like it includes that those species whose population are still abundant means whose population are still very less but they have a continuous threats for severe adverse factors through their throughout their range so all so it's a example is giant clam and the, it includes those species that are not endangered but are likely to move into the endangered category in the near future if the threats to its survival continues operating it also includes a species whose population are still abundant but are under threat from severe adverse factor throughout their range and near threatened are the species which are nearly to threat means species they have threat to be going to be vulnerable to endangered critically endangered so these are the not not nearly threatened species when it has been evaluated against the criteria but does not qualify for critically endangered endangered or threatened now but in close to quantifying for for or is likely to quantify for one of those category in the near in near future and it's a example is nicobar pigeon nicobar pigeon in, is under the category of near threatened category now comes to the next category that is a uh, rare category and uh, not uh, evaluated category rare category means these uh, include species with small population in the world that are not at uh, at present endangered or vulnerable but are a risk these species are usually restricted within specific geographical area or habitat or any thinly scattered over a more extensive range example is himalayan rafflesia means like uh, they are the himalayan rafflesia is a rare species of that particular population and this is species with small population in the world because they can be um, bloom uh, twice in a 17 year himalayan rafflesia so you can see that it has a very small population and it is present in the himalayan himalayan region only eastern himalayan hot spot area only so but it has a very high risk this species are usually restricted within several geographical area or habitats or are thinly scattered over a more extensive range so this himalayan rafflesia is present only in the eastern himalayan hotspot and it is present in the eastern himalayan region only and it has a very small geographical area and it is a very rare species of that particular area because it will bloom in two times in the 70 years and it includes and it has a very small population small population small population low geographical area <clears throat> and restricted with specific geographical area and are thinly scattered they are thinly scattered <clears throat> they are thinly scattered and over a most more ex uh, extensive range so this is called as rare species and now comes to the not evaluated means those taxa which is not evaluated when it has not yet been evaluated against this category this criteria so this was all about the red data book what we have study in the red data book means first one is the extinct category means those uh, animal that is extinct today 
to that is uh, example is the asiatic cheetah and next one is the extinct in the wild that is that is the mulberry silk uh, moth and next one is the critically endangered critically endangered are those species that is that is comes under the category of very high risk of endangered means very less population of that species is present extinct means from last 15 year no last individual has died before 50 years extinct in the wild that is not present in the forest or their own habitat that is present in the captivity only now next one is a critically endangered critically endangered means those species that is very high risk of danger and next is the endangered species the species that is very dangered next one is the vulnerable species that is very high risk of going to be vulnerable vulnerable one day and near threatened is nearly threatened species a least concern is those species that have not that is comes and very least concern is there that will not going to be uh, in to be extinct but but we have to take concern also so this is all about the red data book what we have discussed like which <clears throat> which category which species falls under which categories now <clears throat> now uh, we we are going to discuss about the uh, we are going to discuss about the case study of india some extinct species of india some is, that species that is that is extinct in the india so first one is the dodo species dodo species is a very very famous example for human induced extinction because dodo species is extinct in today's today's world and it's the last individual is died 50 year back nobody has seen this dodo birds it is been it has been <clears throat> draw by an, an artist on the basis of what people has suggested about that bird so dodo bird is a extinct flightless bird that was endemic to island of mauritius only it is endemic to the island of Maur mauritius only and it is the one of the most famous example of human induced extin extinction because the sailors of mauritius island and other to come quickly they decimated the dodo population as an as an easy source of fresh meat for their voyage as human settled on the island loss of habitat further threaten threaten this bird what will happen at the morisus uh, morisus island when that bird is present in the only endemic to the island of morisus and this bird is a flightless bird so when the sailors uh, was there at the morisus island they are using this word bird, bird as the fresh meat for their pop, for their for their voice also so and um, and they, they have they have introduced some new species of of uh, pigs uh, they have introduced some uh, new species of cows uh, to that area but due to the introduction of some invasive new species and due to the destruction of habitat habitat and due to the over poaching poaching of uh, habit poaching of uh, this dodo bird bird this bird has been uh, has been extinct due to it from the morisus island nobody has seen this bird and this is a very common example of human induced in extinction this extinction of dodo is caused due to the human human behavior only human behavior only because human is going to be is this is a flightless bird and human is using this bird as a easy source of their meat and human when human is going to settle on that island some loss of habitat is also there they have introduced some new species of pigs cow animal birds with them also so due to the introduction of new species due to the destruction of their habitat this bird is extinct today in today's category the dodo is not present in the world and this is and it is a endemic of the morisus island only so it is not present in anywhere of the world now comes to the asiatic cheetah this is a critically endangered extinct in india this is the very, um, very common example of asiatic cheetah and this is the extinct species of india it is extinct since 1949 so what it was living in the open semi arid grassland savanna scrub on isolated low hillock and amidst to the plains they are living on this area and this is the fastest animal on and on land and can achieve terrific speed of 150 to 120 km per hour it is the fastest animal on the land so what is the reason of its extinction is that it is the due to the destruction of habitat and it is a increase in human habitation and overgrazing by domestic stock and the dry part of southwestern and central asia to india 
in the past the species used to occur in northern and central india previously extinct in india now found in ussr and in, and in northeastern iran as a scattered survivor very less species is there in the ussr and northeastern iran but it is extinct in india and the main reason of this extinction for this magnificent magnificent cat was that the destruction of habitat due to increase of human habitation and overgrazing of domestic stock and this it is a very fastest animal on the land and it can achieve terrific speed of 115 to 120 km per hour and a asiatic cheetah is extinct since 1949 now comes to the next species that is pink headed duck the duck which head is pink this is also a extinct species in india this is like a it is probably extinct but until the last known fact of its former range in survey this cannot be confirmed its population started declining as early as 1878 due to shrinkage of its habitat in hunting the last authentic site record was in june 1935 that is in darbhanga bihar from 1984 to 1919 under the project endangered bird bnhs bombay natural high society carried out incentive in, intensive surveys to rediscover the bird but where they were unsuccessful for this pink headed duck so this duck is also coming under the category of extinct species of india and its scientific is, name is rodonesa carophyllacea and its population is started declining in as early as 1817 as due to shrinkage of its habitat and habitat destruction and hunting so what we have got by studying all these uh, extinction and all these species all extinction the major reason for extinction is due to habitat destruction and hunting of the species now comes to the next species which is western flytrap western flytrap is a is a also a slender tree that grow that comes under the category of critically endangered and it is a slender twiner that grow in open semi evergreen forest among bushes and lateritic soil and it's it is endemic to western ghat western ghat hotspot and it's a, presently its status is critically endangered and it has been threatened by habitat loss and absence of any conservation method undertaking so it is also getting critically endangered category due to the habitat loss and habitat destruction and this is also a endemic species because an extinction is and it is under the category of critically endangered species now comes to the next species this is glazelia freya and it is a rare endangered end endemic plant originally found by nicol alexander dalzelia that's why its name is dalzelia on a hill near junar where now it survive in a very limited number it it has not been seen in other animal similar habitat in the adjoining hilly areas which are being denuded and eroded the species grow on exposed bare rock of hill slope and cliff basically locally endemic it is found in junar and purandara hills of pune district maharashtra and its status is that besides being endemic and rare it also declared as one of the world's 12 endangered species listed by the iucn and due to this reason its collection and uh, export is banned by the government of india so it is among the 12 endangered species listed by the iucn now comes to the next species that is tiger tiger is our our national animal graceful royal and elegant animal so tiger is called as our national animal tiger is also comes under the category of endangered species and it basically lives in the varied habitat like dry open jungle humid evergreen forest and mangrove swamps it is found practically throughout india except the desert of rajasthan gujarat punjab and higher reaches of himalaya it is present throughout the india except some areas and the number of tiger is negligible it is not present tiger is totally absent in goa haryana tripura and manipur and it, at present 1706 tiger is there and due to illegal poaching and loss of habitat it, because of that reason tiger has comes under the category of endangered species for the for the survival of this species to save this species government of india has launched a program in 1973 that is project tiger and that project tiger will increase this tiger number in all india also india so due to the habitat loss and habitat destruction our national animal tiger comes under the category of extinction 
so this is because we are over exploiting our our biodiversity we are over due to the exploitation of over exploitation of biodiversity now next is the asiatic lion that is panthera leo panthera leo is a very large powerful built cat and its distribution is a little over 100 years ago the asiatic lion ranges from western iran to eastern india during the 19th century it was reported in india from gujarat to bihar however by the second half of the 20th century it had been wiped out to of its entire range except sasan gir in gujarat the main reason of threat are poaching lot of habitat to agriculture decline in number of prey species overgrazing by domestic stock and others due to again here again that is the main reason for the threat of uh, threat are poaching loss of every habitat agriculture for agriculture declining in number of prey species overgrazing by domestic stocks and others now comes to the uh, the category of uh, this is all about the extinct or uh, common extinct animals extinct flora and fauna of india we have a study about the all the case study of the india indian extinct species so first one is the tiger lion tiger lion some himalayan species some floral flora species all are in the category of of endangered species now comes to the endemic species endemic species what is endemic species species that are found only in a particular region are known as endemic species also 60% of endemic species is found in himalayan and the western ghats and the example for endemic species are sparrowia himalayan ovula ridia nepenthes cassiana lion tail macaw nilgiri langur brown park civet and nilgiri tahar all these are endemic fauna and flora of india endemic species means those species that are found only to a particular region so this is this is a basic definition of endemic species species that are found to a particular region and almost 60% of the endemic species in india is found in himalayan and western ghat only means that's why this area comes under the category of hot spots because these are the basic major hot spot of india himalayan eastern himalayan region and western ghat is the major hot spot of india so for for getting any place as a hot spot is because of the endemic species because of the two criteria only it should be having a high endemism and it should be having a high rate of extinction so if endemism is more obviously more extinction is there because more rare species will found so it, so they have a very loss uh, geographical lo location they have less population so they are they are, they are rate of extinction their the threat to be going to be extinct in future is very high because of due to this endemism because of so that this is the hot spot that's why that place is called as hot spot and for the preservation of these endemic species that place is uh, categorized under the category of hot spot so endemic flora are the Speria Himalaya Overia Lucidia and Nepenthes Cassiana are the endemic flora of uh, India and endemic fauna fauna are the lion tail macaw nilgiri langur brown palm civet nilgiri tahar or are endemic fauna of India so due to endemic species are mostly found in India in the eastern himalayan region and western ghat region because these region are the hot spot also so for any species we, we have uh, already understand the basic definition of endemic species so for making any area as a hot spot area that exhibit high species richness as well as high species endemism um, are termed as hot spot of biodiversity so that area those area which are having very high species richness as well as high species endemism are termed as hot spot of biodiversity so biodiversity has been coined by the term by the scientist dr norman meyer they introduced the term in 1988 at that time 25 hot spot were identified out of which two were in india later nine were added more that will bringing total of 34 hot spot and among 34 hot spot of the world three found in india extending into the neighboring countries also the western ghat is extending up to the sri lankan region also and now next is the indo burman region and eastern himalayan region so these are the three basic hot spot main hot spot of india and india is having due to its high richness of species and due to its high endemism 
endemism india has three hot spot among 34 hot spot of the world three is found in india only and hot spot is is given is introduced by the scientist named norman mayer so three hot spot is then in india first one is the western ghat region second one indo burma region and eastern himalayan region so we are going to discuss about all these hot hot spot in coming slides hot spot is nothing hot spot of biodiversity is nothing but that area where high species richness is there as well as high species endem endemism are there so this area and high rate of extinction is also there and they have very high risk of getting extinction of that species because those species that are endemic means they have less geographical uh, distribution they have uh, little population so their rate of extinction their their risk of extinction is very high of that area so now first one is the eastern himalayan region eastern himalayan region is that that region of the isolated valley of sikkim this is the first one hot spot eastern himalayan hot spot first one hot hot spot that is the deep location of the valley of the sikkim and you can see it in the indian uh, india map that that is it is present in the some part of assam nagaland this uh, this area this line is called as the eastern eastern himalayan hotspot because and it is a very rich diversity and it is a very very high endemism is there this is a very high rich rich biodiversity of the area and it is recorded 35000 total flora of that area and these are endemic to this this region only 35000 of total species is there and they are endemic to this this area only uh, among which 4250 species of sikkim of which 60% uh, 60% are endemic only so 60% of the species are endemic that means it it is a very rich rich endemic species is there 60% of their total species is endemic to this area and esperia himaliana is a, a parasitic angiosperm that seen only twice in the last 17 years last 17 year that can be seen by twice time only so this this species has a very high risk of extinction due to its low geographical location and low population low population it will bloom only it it can be seen only twice in the last 17 year this esperia himaliana this parasitic angiosperm is there so very high endemism it indicates that eastern himalayan region is having a very high rate of endemism is there you can see that this is the place of the eastern himalayan region orange color now it is a deep valley deep and isolated valley of sikkim now comes to the next uh, next hot spot of india this is western ghat western ghat is an another hot spot of india western ghat cover four states of india first one is the maharashtra kerala karnataka and tamil nadu and it cover around 17000 km square strips of the forest and it covers four states of india maharashtra kerala karnataka and tamil nadu and 40% of the plants are endemic to this area 40% of the plant are endemic to this area 40% of their plants are endemic 62% of amphibians are endemic 62 50% of lizards are end endemic to this area and the major river basin of this area is the agastya malai hills silent valley new amblam reserve reserve basin this is all about the western ghat of india western ghat cover four states of india this is maharashtra kerala karnataka and tamil nadu so lion and macaw is the macaw that is found in the western ghat only and th this is also comes under the category of endangered species some of the many species of this area comes under the category of endangered and critically endangered area because the red data book they have they have listed many species of india among critically endangered and endangered species and all mostly species in this in this red data book is from the uh, from the western ghat and, um, and the all three hot spots of india western ghat this is 17000 km square strip of forest and 20% of forest evergreen and semi evergreen are there and it cover four states maharashtra kerala karnataka and tamil nadu and 40% of the endemic plants are there 62% of amphibians are there 
फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ लिजार्ड आते हैं इट कवर्स अगस्ता मेला हिल साइलेंट वैली न्यू एम्बलम रिजर्व रिजर्व बेसिन ऑफ दिस एरिया दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द वेस्टर्न घाट हॉट स्पॉट नाउ कम्स टू द नेक्स्ट हॉट स्पॉट दैट इज इंडो बर्मा रीजन इंडो बर्मा रीजन हॉट स्पॉट इज द रीजन ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज इन द स्टेट्स ऑफ अरुणाचल प्रदेश आसाम मेघालय मणिपुर मिजोरम त्रिपुरा यू कैन सी इन द मैप दिस दिस एरिया इज द इंडो बर्मा रीजन दिस कवर फ्रॉम द ईस्ट ऑफ गंगेज रीजन गंगा एंड ब्रह्मपुत्रा दिस इज एंड ड्यू टू द ड्यू टू द कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ टू रिवर गंगा एंड ब्रह्मपुत्रा लो लैंड ऑफ दिस एरिया दिस इज वेरी हाईली प्रोडक्टिव रेंज ऑफ द टू रिवर्स and this is basically the low land of this two river and it covers all the states like manipur mizoram tripura meghalaya nagaland and south assam and it is one of the most densely forested region of the country this is the very highly densely forest forested in the country and mostly almost 13000 1500 species of plants are there among which 7000 are endemic in nature and 1260 species of birds is there in this area and 430 mammals in this area so it covers indian state like uh, manipur mizoram tripura meghalaya nagaland and south assam and it is mainly the east ganges ganges and brahmaputra low land that's why it is a very productive land of this area of this um, this india and that it, it is very highly densely forested region of the country indo burma region is the third hot spot of india and due to its high densely forest cover of the area and so this is we are we have discussed all three hot spot of india first one is the eastern himalayan region western ghat and indo burma region in india is having a very rich biodiversity that's why india is having a risk of extinction is also very high due to due to overgrazing of, of by the cattle due to uh, loss of habitat destruction of habitat due to due to the poaching of animal due to smuggling of animal the risk of extinction and risk of critically going to be endangered is very high in indian 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 biodiversity so we have to we have to study all these uh, all these uh, animals in a in for the its conservation also so in the next lecture we will discuss about the conservation of uh, of species and the types of conservation of species and the distribution of species so india is having a high endemism and high endemism indicates its uh, distribution is very less and the population is also very less and due to high richness due to high endemism due to high more amount of species is there so their risk of extinction is very high so the extinction is going to be very high for indian uh, hot spots that's why three three reason of india comes under the category of hot hot spot and iucn listed more than 1500 species of india under the red data book under the for the for the critically endangered or endangered category so iucn has uh, reported 1500 species of india under the under the under the category of endangered so we have to study um, about the conservation of species in situ conservation ex situ conservation in the coming lecture i'll go it i'll i'll discuss about all these things and we have to use all these all these in a sustainable manner because due to its sustainability of biodiversity sustainability of all products then only we'll go we'll do more research then only we'll get more number of drugs from the from the forest and then we only we'll get more commercial products from the forest for our livelihood and then then we can use for our today's generation for our future generation also so so we have to we have to use all these products in a sustainable manner we we we, we have we cannot over exploit all these things and smuggling is nowadays government has banned smuggling government has banned trading of uh, animal articles trading because they will give some some punishment for this so they have made rule for this also so this will comes under the category of of um, of extinction species now thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates